Hello everybody, welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. In today's video, we have a space shuttle that we are going to be taking to Mars, also known as Duna in the game, and back without refueling at all. So, gonna throttle up the engines, gonna hit the boosters, and out go the launch clamps, and now the shuttle is in the air doing its little power slide off the pad. Let me get a little bit of a time lapse going here, and now it can start its gravity turn to begin pitching over and get itself into orbit. Space shuttles are really cool. I should do more of them in KSC. They're very fun. They're a pain to fight, to be honest. Yeah, it, it took me a long time to get a, a working space shuttle. Um, well, I guess that was back when I was the big noob. Big noob, but, uh, but they're, it's hard, you know? Uh, they're, they're really hard to get control because of the off-center thrust and the boot. It's a weird design. I don't know why they even went with this design in real life. Really wacko design, but either way, <laughs> pretty dangerous, too. But uh, who cares about safety, am I right? So, uh, engines are throttled back up because we are through max Q, about to cross 20 kilometers as booster separation will be happening right about now. There they go, Separatrons to clear them away from the vehicle. And now it's just the orange tank with the three RS-25 engines, or vector engines, as they are known as in the game, powering the shuttle into orbit. It is quite difficult to control the shuttle when it's at this point because you really have to keep the thrust centered right, and SAS doesn't really work great, and it's kind of hard when you have to WASD it around, you know? They should have joystick support or like yoke support for KSP2. That should be a thing. I know there's like mighty way to do in KSP1, but I am not that skilled at mod. So either way, I'm gonna just about ready to cut the engine as we're gonna set our app laps to be around around 80 kilometers above the surface of Kerbin and gonna be cutting the engines now. And now we can coast on up to our apsilapsilapsilus and we can do our circularization burn and then we can start our journey to Zaduna land or Zamars land or Zaduna, Zaduna. Uh, as you can probably tell, I don't know, Space Shuttle uh, is not meant to go to Duna. Uh, it is it is meant to go to low curb in orbit and to come back from low curb in orbit. So, or I guess low Earth orbit in real life. But uh, yeah, this thing was not easy. This thing, I made, I, so the only way it's even possible to do it is uh, I, I have the cargo bay just completely filled with fuel. That's, and we literally use every drop of fuel in this video. So the margins are, are not very good. Um, we actually had to do our trans dune injection, our interplanetary encounter burn thing with our orange tank because fuel in KSP, you know, does not equal fuel in real life. So we actually had enough fuel in the orange tank to do that, to that burn. Um, so now we have to get ready to ditch the orange tank after we do our quick little correction of burn. And while we are doing that, I'm going to do the plugs. Oh my gosh, guys, if you're enjoying the video, smash the subscribe button. I don't know. Is that what they're supposed to oh, We're getting really close. I'm not even going to like, you know, like, oh my, let's try and do a subtle plug. You know, we're getting close to 10,000 subscribers. I would, I would like to get that. I don't know, so a lot of cool stuff I have planned. You know, we're gonna get some merch. We're gonna, that probably no one's gonna buy, but hey, it'll be fun. Um, I'm gonna get a Twitter. I don't know why that's like a thing I should, I don't know. And I'm gonna do face cam stuff, so I don't know. And then we'll probably do a sub special video. But uh, either way, we're now at, at doing it. Maybe something else I forgot. Also, join the Discord and like the comment. That's all the other plugs I'm supposed to tell you guys to do. We have a cool Discord. You can also donate. We can Patreon uh, member stuff to get shout out. We but. Shout everyone out at the end of the video. We have a little screen with everyone's name. Starting to get a lot of people though, so thanks everyone. But either way, uh, doing an entry. We have separated the orange tank, and we are now just doing a little bit of bouncy bouncies off the atmosphere, just to try and find a nice, nice little spot to uh, to put her down on. Because you want to try and find as flat of a place as possible, and a place as close to uh, sea level, I guess ground level. I don't know what you'd call it on Duna because it doesn't have any oceans, but either way. Um, it's going to be very obvious. Very obvious. Quick save and quick load, but either way. Yeah, this thing was very hard to do first try. The, the, I really don't get KSP sometimes. I can probably rant about this after we take off, uh, after, after we launch back from Duna, but this thing landing was big nightmare. In short, it is very difficult to get the thing slow enough um, that the gear will not break but also fast enough that you won't hit the ground super fast so uh we popped the we have the drogue tree on the back of the or i guess the parachute on the back of the of the shuttle so we popped it really early so our landing mechanism is actually not not very not very plain like so as you get close to around 500 meters above the surface now as you can see we're coming in way too fast to be able to land on the here they will very melt but there it goes engine oh my gosh we do a flip it's like a starship landing oh my gosh we have to propulsively land. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. It's very, it's very weird. But it's literally the only way that works. Um, so, but uh, so yeah, uh, we're gonna be using uh, three engines. So our, our one vector and then two of the uh, the orbital maneuvering engines. And just gonna try and come in for a very soft landing. The back hillfin really likes to break off, so we have to not really hit the ground with that. Even though we kind of oh that was sketchy, very sketchy. Ooh, 
If you notice, I didn't I didn't deploy the nose gear because it was snapping off too. The the the, the wheels were in a really snappy off mood for this flight. I really don't know why. Um, but either way, we have made it to do it. Like I start a lot of the times it ha it doesn't do that. Like I've hit the ground super hard before with a space shuttle with anything and the wheels don't snap off but they just felt like snap i don't know it's because if i had extra weight because of the fuel tanks in the cargo bay or something but they just were not having a good time to go and plant our little nasa flag there um with our with our engineer kerbal who has to go ahead and uh repack the the parachute so we can actually land on uh land back on kerbal and that's really an rcs zone i should have probably turned those off before we <laughs> before landed and don't worry the, don't worry if you thought this duna landing was kind of weird the kerbal landing is also weirder it is very weirder uh stay tuned and it bounced off the flag i didn't know that you could actually stand on flags with that but either way um we are now going to cross fade without refueling no refueling right so this is all with the one fuel tank so uh, that's kind of cool we're gonna throttle up the three engines and lift it off all right we are now in the air and now we have to do the very difficult task of actually get into orbit which is not easy either because this thing is not very stable with one engine or one of the main engines firing it's, it's way less stable with all three of them firing don't, don't worry i tried that um it's just i have to pre-gimbal the engine so they can actually compensate for the orange tank and the srbs on launch which it doesn't work when you're trying to just fly with just the vectors it's uh, it's weird it's bad evil but we're we're doing it it's, it's once you get above the lower atmosphere it starts to stabilize out a little bit more and here we are going to get ready for our our cutoff of the engine and there it goes so now we're going to have to stage kind of we're going to actually what we're going to do when we get into into space is we're going to go ahead and uh open up uh, after we get our go get our little maneuver node set up we're going to open up the cargo bay and we're actually going to jettison the fuel tank that we have in there um, just so we can save weight. Um, so we, uh, I, I said it so the fuel would drain from that tank first and then drain from the tanks on board the shuttle second. So we actually have just enough fuel left in our shuttle to be able to do our, our return burn back to Kerbin, uh, with, with the allotted fuel that we, we have barely enough. Uh, we do turn off that, that center vector just because we need the extra ISP or the efficiency from the orbital maneuvering engines or the OMSs, which I use carriers for mine. So we're going to use... Uh, our, our fuel to uh, to, to burn it back to Kerbin, and uh, luckily I had them set right so the thing didn't flip out of control. I was really worried that it was going to do that, but we really lucked out. So I'm going to uh, going to do our burn, and then it's going to be time to re-enter back into Kerbin. And like, holy crap, re <laughs> Kerbin entry is, I swear, way too easy. Like I can, I have, like I can just like dive bomb straight at this at into the atmosphere coming in from Duna height. And it doesn't melt. Like, we had to do a little bit of melting avoidance maneuvers coming in, but way less than you would think. Like, oh my. KSP is really easy mode. I'm playing on full re-entry heating. Like, I mean, if it was that easy to do in real life, you know, they could just, just smash anything into the atmosphere and it'd be fine. You know, what do you even need a heat shield for? Like, I don't have one. I mean, I got maybe they have built-in shield. I don't know. No, they don't. Because the, the, the healing is like 2,000 Kelvin or something on the Mark III parts. I'm, I could be getting this completely wrong, but like... Holy crap, that is some pretty, KSP is really, I wish, I, I wish real life was that easy. Starship would be a lot easier if that were the case. Uh, I mean, space shuttle would be too, if we can just land it from Duna Height, but a martyr, you know. But here, we're starting our re-entry uh, to Kerbin. I'm going to do a little bit of, a uh, little bit of, a uh, little bit of, uh, you know, heating avoidance. We're not going super low into the atmosphere, only to around 40 kilometers uh, for our first little, our first pass. We actually only do one pass, we only bounce it back up to, like, not that high. So... Um, it is important to try and get to land, though, because landing on the water is, uh, you know, not really what you want, um, you, you know, for, like, rescue reasons and stuff. It's a plane, you know? <laughs> land a plane on, we saw, we saw how that worked out in the Hudson River, right? The Hudson River, I said that here. Either way, uh, coming in for our second entry now, um, it's gonna warm up a little bit again, not even close to what it did last time, because it's coming in at less than half the speed, so... Uh, we are gonna just about make it to the uh, the next land mass over Sarah being night. Can't you know? It's unfortunate, but where we ended up coming in, uh, given the given uh, the rotation of the planet. But anyway, so uh, here we are um, on the on the nighttime side, and we're gonna come in for a landing. If you look just to the right, there's those little water areas. That is where I'm gonna be going for our landing. And who's ready for a janky landing number two? Um, because oh, the wheels seriously were not cooperating. I don't know why. I, some, I, I swear, it's KS, KSP is, is doing some weird crap. It's a conspiracy, guys. Illuminati's real. But 
I don't know. It feel I don't know. So this thing it was it was just blowing up every time I tried to land it on uh, on the ground. So here is epic landing technique. So coming in, looks like we're coming in for a nice little landing, and then we're dropping down to one time speed. And here comes wait. Here we go. Oh oh, we're kind of low. Parachute out and speed down. Water landing. Yeah, we water landed it. That that was that was the system that I that I did. Um, kind of weird system so what I tried to do is I tried to land it like right next to the water so I could use our last few meters a second of Delta V you know, instead of using every drop of fuel right so we can actually power ourselves onto the land and be able to to actually stop where we're supposed to be stopped so if anyone knows why the landing gear did not cooperate let me know like I didn't have anything rigid attached I, I don't think it'd be uh, rigid attachment would cause that so maybe I forgot to un but the point is we made it back jankily but uh, that's going to bring us to the end of today's video. So on screen now is all of the members. Thank you for being a member. And now the Patreons. Thank you for being a Patreon. That's going to be the end of today's video. So I'd like to thank you for watching. Until next time, please join to comment to this video once again. Thank you for watching. Until next time. And bye.